friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about five ways to save on personal care. And this is part of a series, a multi-part series, and I will go ahead and link to that series at the end of this video because I have a lot more videos I'll be linking to in this one. So let's start with number one, soap. Now the very best thing you can do is learn how to make your own soap. I have a good number of videos out there on soap making and I will go ahead and link to one of them right up here. It's so easy and once you get over your fear of working with lye, then you can start making your own soap and save a lot of money. You don't have to get fancy. You can keep it simple and just do a basic lard soap, just lard, water, and lye, and that's all you need, and it gives you a nice pure white soap that's also a very hard soap. It's very good for using for anything, whether it be washing your body or washing, it's good for washing your face or even doing your laundry with. So you can use your soap scraps or cut up your bars of soap and make little pieces of soap like this and use it in your laundry detergent. But even if you're still very nervous about making your own soap and you'd prefer to have other people do it, yes, it's going to be a lot more expensive buying a good natural soap, not that cheap stuff in it that really strips your skin and your hair that you get at the store. Um, if you're having to, if you're wanting to just go ahead and buy bar soap, you can still extend it and get a lot out of one bar of soap by making uh, liquid hand soap like this. So this was, is going to go quite a ways. And I do have a video out there on how you can make your own hand soap. And uh, Mr. Rain just drilled holes in his plastic uh, lids like this. And then we got some, took the tops off of old uh, hand soaps that we used to buy. And so that's all we use for our hand soap is just the homemade, using homemade soap, or even if you had to buy it, you can really extend the life because all you need is typically a one bar of soap to a gallon of water and you'll have a gallon of hand soap. Or you can increase the strength by doing two bars. Just keep in mind that sometimes it'll turn out really thick and other times it will turn out runny. The strength will still be the same. So for example, and I'm going to go to point two right here, and that is making your own homemade shampoo. Once you have your soap, your natural soap, like this one right here is hemp seed soap and nasturtium flowers. And this is the one I really like using in making my own homemade shampoo. And I have a recipe, a video on this. I'll go ahead and link to it right up here. But basically all it is is this one, I didn't use all of the herbs I used in that video. I just used some flowers that were growing fresh at the time. This is the last batch I made and I really, really like it. It's my favorite yet. And this is uh, rose petals, pansies, lavender, and calendula. And I can't remember if I used another flower, but for sure I know I used those. I used a lot of them. That's why the color turned out really strong. And I made about a... Mm, three quarts using two bars of soap and then a big batch of tea that I made or infusion I made out of the flowers and a big pot of water and then just add the soap and let it dissolve in there and it makes a really great shampoo and so that's point number two it's second way you can save on personal care and so the shampoo in case you want to know how I use it I just put it in a little squirt bottle like I would go buy those little tiny bottles of dish soap just so I could have those little squirt bottles and then you I just put in maybe this much of the soap because it's still it's really strong even though it looks very runny very liquidy it's a very strong as it is and then I dilute it in a, you know about oh one part of this shampoo to about four or five parts water and then I just squirt it onto my hair it also works really good as um, you know a, a liquid soap for washing your whole body with your face or whatever now, um, another option for hair washing, and people hear me talk about this a lot, is using your own homemade vinegar. And the same idea, I do about one part vinegar diluted in about five parts water-ish, somewhere in there, four to five parts water, and I squirt it onto my hair, work it through, and then rinse it out. And a lot of times, that is all I'll do to wash my hair, is using homemade vinegar, and that is the cheapest way to go yet. Now, if your hair and your skin are dry enough, then you can even resort to just using water to wash your hair. I know people that do that, and it works just fine for them. If you're, that's, if you're, again, if your hair is dry enough, that should work. 
Um, I have very dry hair and very dry skin, but I still prefer to use the, the shampoo and the vinegar because it also conditions my hair when I do that, especially with all the herbs in the shampoo. And, and vinegar is actually a natural conditioner for your hair. And so I don't need to use any conditioners. I haven't bought shampoo or conditioner in a few years now. And I love going all natural. I save so much money doing it that way. And so I highly recommend giving it a try. Now keep in mind, if you're still using store-bought products and you want to suddenly switch to going the more natural methods here, um, especially if you have oily skin in here, it's going to take your body a little while to adjust. So give it time. Just give it time. There may be even a way you can, and maybe some people can comment down below, that you can kind of ease into it so it's not such a big adjustment. It wasn't for me because my hair and skin are, are naturally so dry. The great thing that once I switched to my own homemade soap uh, and shampoo was that I not only did I no longer need to condition my hair, is I no longer needed to start rubbing lotion all over uh, all over myself because my skin is so dry. And then using the store-bought stuff would just strip all the natural oils out and make my skin even more dry. And so I was having to slather on lots and lots of lotion. So that saves me money in that way because I don't have to buy any more lotion. Now let me go to number three for uh, personal care is I do still use skin cream, but I make my own. And I only really need to use it on my face and my hands. Sometimes I use it on my feet my elbows and my knees when they get extra dry, but no longer do I need to use it all over. But I do wash my face every day. That gets one thing that I do wash every day is my face and obviously my hands several times a day. So I do need this skin cream for those. Uh, showering less is also going to help keep your skin and hair from drying out so much too, and that also will save you water. So every other day is about how often I shower and wash my hair at, at the most. And so that's really all I need, and I find that my skin and my hair are in so much better shape as a result. So making your own skin cream, I do have a video on this. I'll go ahead and link to it right up here. Um, you, it doesn't have to be just for girls. This can be for guys too. Just consider if you're going to use essential oils, maybe use a different blend of essential oils, maybe something that's, you know, maybe has a more masculine smell like I use for Mr. Rain when I do any of his stuff. I like to use cedar patchouli blend. And uh, that's going to take me to my next point of the deodorant. So when I do the homemade deodorant, it's a powder. I have a video on that. I'll link to right up here. I make a big batch and put it uh, into the quart jars. And then from the quart jars, I put it in the smaller containers. And then for his, I use cedar patchouli essential oil in it, which is just which is just, you know, it's really just fluff. You don't have to do that, but it does make it nicer. And then for mine, I use the orange clove essential oils, which are my favorites. The great thing about the homemade deodorant is it also doubles as a really wonderful foot powder. So if you have your feet tend to get really sweaty or stay damp a lot, and or you tend to deal with foot funguses, whether it be toenail fungus or athlete's foot, uh, the homemade deodorant is an excellent way to help stave that off and possibly even cure it. And because the baking soda is going to raise the pH, it's going to give you a higher pH, and it's and that will really discourage foot fungus. And then the starch that's in it. So basically, it's just mostly it's just baking soda and some kind of starch. I recommend arrowroot powder or tapioca starch. There are some others like you could you could use kudzu. I think is how you pronounce it. Um, those will help absorb extra excess moisture and keep your feet drier to help prevent uh, athlete's foot and other things like that. So uh, go ahead and check that recipe out and uh, remember you can alter the amounts, the ratios of baking soda to the starch. Some people will want to go less on the baking soda because it tends to burn their skin, especially if you're when you're using it on your armpits as a deodorant. Now you can, um, especially for you ladies, if for an easy way to apply your deodorant, just use a makeup brush. That's what I do, and I just dip it in there and just brush it on. Uh, Pat just uses a pinch and rubs it on. You can do it however you want. Now the number five is making your own. Uh, oral care. So tooth powder is one way to do that. Again, I have a recipe on this. I will link to right up here. 
and it, the ingredients are pretty much the same as the deodorant. In fact, this is the deodorant right here. Here's the tooth powder. Uh, it's just, you know, a starch, the baking soda, and then uh, peppermint essential oil. And um, you can also put in, I think in that video, I was still putting in the magnesium and the calcium. It's another way just to add a little bit more minerals. A powdered a citrate form is what I use. Um, and I do that sometimes still in this. And that will help to remineralize your teeth. And, and then the minerals get absorbed through your gums. And so you're getting more of the calcium and magnesium into your body that way too. So the, those main differences between the tooth powder and the... Uh, deodorant powder is the essential oils used and if you're going to use the magnesium or calcium citrates in there and that's totally up to you you can save more money by leaving those out another option for uh, brushing your teeth with is plain old unrefined organic coconut oil you will be surprised if you haven't tried it yet you'll be surprised at how well it works to brush your teeth with just plain old co coconut oil or even mixing the coconut oil with your tooth powder to make more of a paste a lot of times i just use plain old coconut oil and it works so good for my teeth and then so i'll brush for maybe five minutes and then i'll take out the toothbrush and then do it the rest of the way more like an oil pulling where you're swishing the oil around in there and so excellent for your oral care. You consider the fact that coconut oil is a nat naturally it's an antibiotic, you know, it's antibacterial and so it's going to kill all the bad bacteria in your mouth and help keep your mouth cleaner and it's just it's just really a great method. And then one more thing I want to say about oral care, I've already, already covered my five points and that is uh, you, if you're wanting something to help give a little more bleaching power to your teeth, maybe you just got some really stubborn coffee stains or whatever, a little bit of peroxide on your toothbrush, dip it into your tooth powder, and then, because it's got the baking soda in it, and the peroxide and the baking soda together make a pretty powerful bleaching agent. And so just brush your teeth with that for a little bit and then spit it out. And you may be very happy with the results. You know, even leave it on there for a few minutes or brush for a few minutes. Don't, I mean, don't just brush a little bit. Brush for a few minutes so it can really just sit on there and bleach out those really stubborn stains on your teeth. And it works really, really good. So another natural way, you don't have to go to the dentist and go through the whole teeth bleaching thing or pay for some kind of expensive over-the-counter teeth bleaching kit that who knows what is in that. This is all natural, just baking soda and peroxide. Okay, so that's it for my five ways to save on personal care. And don't forget to add your ways that you like to save on personal care down below so the rest of us can read it and learn from you too. And don't forget to check out the playlist at the end of this video for more in the series on five ways to save. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.